Hello guys and welcome to the first video on this channel. Today I'll be showing you how to create a local connection to a Postgres database using dBeaver on Linux. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First things first, we will need to install OpenJDK, which is the default Java development runtime available on the Debian repository. In order to do that, we will type the following command, sudo apt-y install default-jdk. We're gonna type our password. Please also note that all of the commands and websites that I'll be using in this tutorial will be added in the video description as well. I'll skip the installation process so you don't have to wait. Feel free to pause if yours is not yet completed. Okay, in order to check that the installation was successful, let's type the following command, java hyphen version. As you can see, as of today, we are using the version 11.0.16. Now we'll be adding the dbver repository to your distribution by using the following commands. After adding the repository, we will update the apt list and then install the dbver community edition. So we'll now type sudo apt update. followed by sudo apt install dbeaver ce We'll skip the installation process for now. Now that dbeaver is installed, you can check the version by typing the following apt policy dbeaver ce If you want to install the dbeaver community edition on your Windows machine or Mac OS, you can go to dbeaver.io slash download. Don't worry, all of the links will be added in the description. Now for the next step, we are going to open the enterprisedb.com website as they provide advanced open source Postgres database for us to use. In our case, we will download the 10.22 version for Linux. After the download is completed, we will open our terminal and go to the files location. In my case, it's in the downloads folder. Now we will type as follows sudo chmod plus x dot slash and the file name. So the plus x parameter is used to add the x permission, which is actually the symbol for the execute permission. Then we will type sudo dot slash and the file name once again to open it. Now we're going to follow the setup, so we're clicking next, the installation directory will be as default, the components, the data directory will remain the same, and now we have to set up the password for the Postgres user, in my case is 1234, the port will remain the same. We will use the default locale, And here you can see an installation summary, which will click next and next again. After the installation is complete, we can now click on finish. The stack builder wizard can be closed as well. For now, we will open the dbeaver community edition by typing dbeaver ce. If you want to play a little bit with dbeaver, you can go to help and then click on create sample database. This will automatically create a SQLite sample database for you to play with. If you happen to see this pop up, don't worry as it will indicate that some driver files are missing which dbeaver will automatically download. As an example, here is the album table and all of its data that you can see. And now we'll get back to our Postgres database connection. In order to do that, go to database, new database connection, select Postgres, click on next. Now here we will need to add the password that we have mentioned during the enterprise DB setup, which in my case is 1234. Click on text connection. As you can see, it appears as connected. Click on OK. 
and I'll finish. Congratulations, now we have finally established the connection between dBeaver and our local Postgres database. Let's expand it a little bit. So we have databases, Postgres, schemas, and we have the public schema. But unfortunately, we have no table as of now, as the folder is empty. As an example, we will now create a simple table and insert some values in its columns. So right click on Postgres, SQL Editor, open SQL Console. If you want to add the same SQL queries that I'll be using, you can find them in the video description as well. We will now create the table accounts, which has the following columns, user ID, username, password, and email. And then we are going to insert some values in the newly created accounts table. Click on execute. Now that a query was successfully executed, we will need to refresh the public schema. As you can see in the tables, there is no table. So we need to refresh to actually see the changes. But for now, the accounts table has no values in it. So we are going to use the other query that I've added in order to populate the accounts table. Now that the second query was successfully executed, we can go to the accounts table and refresh it once again. As you can see, the columns are now populated with the data that we have provided. I hope that this video helped you and thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.